In 1989, a small movie that went a long way came out. A movie that showed us all that our very own backyards are actually a terrifying place, especially if you shrink down to a miniature size. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids tells the story of Wayne Selensky, played by Rick Moranis, who is an absent-minded basement scientist, who is trying to make a device which shrinks objects. However, without him knowing, his machine shrinks not only his kids, but the kids next door. Where thinking his machine is a failure, Wayne smashes the machine and throws its parts as well as the kids in the garbage outside. Where the four shrunken youngsters must make it through the now much more dangerous backyard in order to inform Wayne that his machine works so they can be restored to their normal size. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids is one of those movies that blew my mind as a kid and to be honest, still does today. So we are going to look into 10 things that you didn't know about this classic family movie. So, let's check it out. Number 10, Small Starts. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids started off as a script called Teeny Weenies, written by reanimator director Stuart Gordon. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Along with science fiction writer Ed Naga and Brian Uzana, who was a frequent collaborator with Stuart Gordon. Gordon and Yuzana pitched the script to Disney, who were interested. And what about Bob script writer Tom Shulman came on board to add to the script, and the project took off, or rather shrank, from there. Number 9. Honey, I Can't Find a Movie Title It seemed that there was a bit of a struggle to find the perfect name for Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, a name that will sound catchy and get the audience ready for a fun-sized adventure. It was decided that Teeny Weenies made it sound too much like a movie for small children, so the title Grounded was then proposed, in order to appeal to the teenage market. After all, most teenagers would be familiar with the word Grounded. The movie was then called The Big Backyard, which kind of would have been an awesome name, but finally Honey I Shrunk the Kids was chosen, as it was a line of dialogue used in the actual movie. I think they also wanted the word shrink or shrinking in the title to pay homage to the science fiction classic The Incredible Shrinking Man. Number 8. Honey, I also can't find a movie director. Originally, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids co-writer Stuart Gordon was going to come on board as the movie's director. After all, he had already proven his directing chops with the reanimator, and going from reanimator to Honey, I Shrunk the Kids would have been... um... fascinating. However, shortly before filming was to commence, Gordon became ill and couldn't commit to directing Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, so first-time director Joe Johnston came on board to take to the director's chair. Before Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Johnston had been a producer on the movie Willow. And after Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, he would go on to direct other hits, such as The Rocketeer, Jumanji, Jurassic Park 3, and Captain America The First Avenger. When watching Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, you can see that Johnston is a competent director with a great cinematic eye. Number 7. Casting Possibilities Originally, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids was going to be a Chevy Chase vehicle, as he was the original choice to play Wayne Selensky. In fact, the script was written with him in mind for the part. However, Chase was too busy at the time making National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. John Candy was the next choice for the part, but he also declined, but recommended Rick Moranis, as the two had previously worked together on Spaceballs, so Rick Moranis was subsequently cast in the role. Moranis had been a rising star ever since his role as Lewis Tully in Ghostbusters, as he would then go on to star in The Little Shop of Horrors. However, the previous year, in 1988, he blew everyone away with his comedic role of Lord Helmet in the as-mentioned Spaceballs. As for the role of Russ, the Selensky's unagreeable neighbour, well, Max Headroom himself, the legendary Matt Frewer, was cast in the role, to which he plays the part of someone so unlikable with so much likability. 
<laughs> yeah, try and figure that one out. Number six, filming locations. So considering Honey, I Shrunk the Kids is set in American suburbia, you would think that the movie was filmed in somewhere like California, right? Well, wrong, as most of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids was actually filmed in Mexico City. To be precise, on the back lot at Churubusco Studios, which is the biggest Latin American studio. So this would have been equipped to handle the massive movie sets for the film. Now granted, some exterior shots were filmed around Beverly Hills, but most of the filming was done in Mexico. So just remember, the next time you watch Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, you may think the action is taking place in suburban America, when in actual fact, it's Mexico City. Number five, the movie couldn't shrink the success of Batman. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids was released on June 23rd, 1989. However, no matter how much fun or enjoyable Honey, I Shrunk the Kids is, it just couldn't compete with Tim Burton's impossibly popular Batman movie, which was dominating the box office at the time. But hey, it's not all bad, as Honey, I Shrunk the Kids still opened at number two spot. So what do you do if you can't defeat Batman? Why, you get help from Roger Rabbit, of course, as when Honey, I Shrunk the Kids was shown, the Roger Rabbit cartoon short Tummy Trouble was also shown beforehand. Who Framed Roger Rabbit was a massive hit one year earlier, to which several Disney-owned movies would show Roger Rabbit shorts before the features. This also included Dick Tracy. Which annoyed Steven Spielberg, whose company Amblin owned Roger Rabbit, as he wanted the short that was shown with Dick Tracy to be shown with arachnophobia instead. Number 4. Antiphone E.T. In Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, when the kids are in their miniature state, in the terrifying terrain of the backyard, they befriend an ant, who now matches their size, who they name Auntie, and becomes a companion for the youngsters. Although many viewers may have fallen in love with Auntie when watching Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, behind the scenes there actually wasn't much love for the friendly backyard bug. Not only did Auntie require 16 operators to make him functional, but the studio was worried that Auntie may look too terrifying for younger viewers. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids co-writer and original director Stuart Gordon was oddly enough asked to make Auntie look less like an ant and more like E.T. However, thankfully, Auntie's original ant-like appearance stayed intact, as well as him not looking like an alien in need of phoning home because Gordon insisted that E.T. looks more terrifying to kids than ants do. They should look on the bright side. At least Auntie didn't look like Brundlefly. Now that would have been messed up. Blech. Number three, Honey, I Changed Your Hair Color. In Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Marcia Strasman plays the Selensky mother and wife, Diane, who at the start of the movie is having marital problems with Wayne, until the end when everything is fixed up. Yeah, it's funny how kids shrinking does that. However, what's odd about Strasman's performance is throughout the movie, the actress's hair color changes as it seems to shift from red to blonde. This is because after two weeks of filming, Disney requested that the actress dye her hair blonde, which she did. So rather than reshoot her scenes where she did have her ginger red hair, they decided to just keep those bits in and hope that no one notices that the character has two different hair colours in the film. To be fair though, it totally fooled me. I guess when you have giant bees and cookies, you don't tend to notice someone's hair colour going from red to blonde. Number 2. Sequels and Spin-Offs Considering Honey, I Shrunk the Kids was a massive hit adventure movie involving shrinking people, there was great potential for sequels. However, the second installment, Honey, I Blew Up the Baby, took a different turn. Released in 1992, this time the adventure was about the Selensky family's new infant son who gradually goes bigger and bigger, till he becomes the size of a building and runs amok in Las Vegas. I wasn't a fan of this one. It just didn't blow my mind like the original did and it just didn't have the fun feeling of adventure. I feel like it should have just stuck to the shrinking aspect. Originally, the movie wasn't even a sequel to Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, but it was a completely different movie called Big Baby. 
until it was decided to incorporate it into a sequel to Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And it kind of shows as it feels like a completely different movie. Then in 1997, there was a director video sequel called Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves, which has the spirit and feel of the first movie. Only this time, the twist is that it's the parents whom have now shrunk. It was enjoyable, but the fact that it was made on a smaller budget does show on screen. Oh, and it stars a very young Mila Kunis. Also in 1997, there was a live action TV series of which I had never heard of. And what's more baffling, it ran for three whole seasons, consisting of 66 episodes. Okay, seriously, am I the only one who didn't know about this series? Why have I never heard of it? This time it was different actors in the role. No Rick Moranis, which kind of puts me off watching it, but who knows? Maybe it was great, I don't know, I haven't seen it. Also in recent years, there have been talks of a Honey, I Shrunk the Kids reboot, which will consist of a series of movies, because Lord knows, for some reason these days, everything needs to be rebooted. I'm too scared to fall asleep in case I wake up to find that I've been rebooted. Number one, unexpected hit. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids was a massive success, which exceeded box office expectations. In fact, it's described as being a sleeper hit, which is a term I had never heard of before doing research for this episode. What a sleeper hit basically means is a movie which is a massive success for a lengthy period of time, despite low marketing or disappointing opening. Honey, I Shrunk the Kids may have shrunk the kids, but it didn't shrink the box office earnings, as it made $222 million on an $18 million budget, and was, at that time, the highest grossing live action Disney movie, taking Disney out of its box office slum that it had been in during the 80s with movies such as Tron and Return to Oz. And thus, live action Disney movies were now to be taken seriously and a force to be reckoned with and has evolved into what it is today, with the likes of Marvel and Star Wars. So that was my look into Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. It's a great and enjoyable family movie, which is as fun now as it was back in 1989. And it's the kind of movie that really makes you appreciate practical effects. So I say definitely check it out. Anyway, I'm Minty, and remember, Ant-Man wasn't the first Disney movie about shrinking people. See ya!